What a great day it is to be here in God's house. And actually, I am going to kind of talk about both things. I want to talk about hope, and I want to talk about love, because those are two important pieces of the Advent season. This is our journey toward Christmas. You know, the scripture I read last week was from 1 Peter. Let me pull it up for you real quick. Because I do want to speak to it. It was 1 Peter 1, verses 3 through 5. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive his salvation, which is to be revealed to you on the last day for all to see. And we talked about how every story begins with a story of hope. Or at least that's what I was trying to say last week. You know, the, the story of Advent begins with the journey, the journey of a young couple. She was pregnant before she was married. An apparent betrothal was betrayed from one point of view. And yet he was kind. And he didn't dismiss her. Both of these people heard angels talking. There was an immaculate conception and then they traveled about 70 miles on foot. It is not the story of royalty, or at least the kind that we expect to hear. One who would change the world. But this is the thing. God's way is not always our way. God shows up It's often in ways that we never quite expect to see happen. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I can honestly speak about an indirect route in my life to get to where I am today. And I imagine as you look back over your life, you can say, yeah, I've seen some of the same things. That I'm not, I'm, I wanted to get here, but it sure did take a while. You ever been there? It's like, why, why didn't I see it? But it's okay, because God will take us. Hope was coming for all people, not just some people, through this Christ child that was predicted. Ingrid McIntyre says that hope, the real thing, breaks into seemingly strange, unexpected places where people often can't afford much of anything. And I can tell you I've seen that with my own eyes in places like Cuba and Honduras and Guatemala, where I see people who are full of hope that according to our standards should be hopeless. Places where people are oppressed and yet when Christ is introduced, there comes an action, and hope springs alive. You know, when we find ourselves in places of pain, we need to lean into hope, because life can be hard. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Life can be hard, and it can be unfair. And see, I think whenever we're too comfortable I believe that's when we're less likely to see and hear miracles, to see messages from God. Affluence takes away our need for dependence on God. In places where there is oppression, in places where there is severe poverty, they need dependence on God. 
for even the most basic items of life. But often, we forget about God along the way of our lives. You see, John Wesley was radical. And we don't really think about that. I don't even know how much many of you know about John Wesley other than you are United Methodists, which is a Wesleyan tradition. But John Wesley believed that praying the words, thy kingdom come, wasn't enough. John Wesley was a man of action. Church should not exist just within the walls. It needs to go to where the people are. And that's what drew me to the United Methodist Church when I came from another tradition because it was about living out my faith in a way that would, would make a difference in the lives of others. It wasn't just about me. It was about now that I understand who Christ is, what is my responsibility to make certain that other people understand who Christ is? The kind of faith that is faith in action makes certain that children have Christmas that hungry people can eat, that lights and heat stay on in homes where they can't pay their bills, that blankets can warm people who are living outside, that someone who is grieving can know that life, this life may be at an end, but it is a transition. It is not the end. Our faith lived out in tangible ways makes a difference in ways that we can never completely know or understand. But it's necessary. And when we step out in these ways, as Chapelwood has so faithfully done over the years, we know that life can get messy. People don't always do exactly what we hope they would do. They don't live the way we think they should. They don't spend the money we, the way we think they should. But this is the thing is that when we give, we give with an open hand and an open heart. Our faith lived out makes a difference. And sometimes that difference doesn't always give us a warm, fuzzy feeling. You know, we like that warm, fuzzy feeling, don't you? I like that warm, fuzzy feeling. It's like, yes, I've done the thing. But Paul was reminding us that it's not about the warm, fuzzy feeling. It's about being faith in action. That if we are believers, God has got us. And then we are to step out. Now I want to read to you some words from Luke. This is called the Magnificat, Mary's Magnificat. <coughs> and this is Mary's response to what God is doing in her life. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord and how my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he took notice of this lowly servant girl and from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous thing. He has scattered the proud and the haughty ones. He's brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel to be remembered as merciful, for he made his promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. This is a young girl, as I said in the beginning, who ended up pregnant outside of wedlock, who 
Her family thought that she was a sh she was shamed. teenager betrothed in a proper and respectable way has a visit from an angel telling her things are not going to go according to her plan that is if she consents if her love for God is greater than her plans for herself and her family this is one of the things I want you to understand we always have the ability to say no. We always have the ability to say, not now, the time's not good for me. I don't know, I don't think this is what I'm supposed to be. But what we learn is that when we say yes, God can do miraculous things for us. You see, First, we were talking about the hope. But it takes an incredible amount of love to step out to make a difference. You see, there's that shallow love, the one that looks around to make sure that other people are noticing that we're doing the right things. And as long as it's not too inconvenient, then I'll be okay with it. It's the love that looks like faith rather than acts in faith. It embraces the leading of God in ways that are authentic and not always easy. For Mary, this meant her life was in peril. And yet she knew that when she said yes to God, that God was going to take care of it and take care of her. John Wesley viewed our faith as a journey. The growth of the maturity of our faith comes forth as a journey. Our life experiences weave together to form a tapestry of who we are every step along the way. And when we take our actions in love, when we move forward in actions, that tapestry becomes incredibly beautiful because love keeps showing up. Our love for others and our love for God. The weeks that lead up to Christmas are all about control and consumption, would you say? You got to have the right thing, give the right toy, be the right person, have the right table setting, all the things. Every bit of marketing is directed on making us act and be a certain way. And that way is very self-indulgent. And very narcissistic. It tries to get us to consume, to own, and control Christmas. But you see, from Advent, from an Advent perspective, it's about stepping out in faith and in love, knowing that it's uncertain and you may not, it may not work out exactly like you think, but it's doing it in love. And love is the opposite of control and possession. When we stop trying to combine and divine define how love should look, love will show up in the most unexpected places. <clears throat> April Casperson says it this way, Advent reminds us that love shows up in unexpected places, transforming 
flawed, imperfect people into people redeemed by love. And God compels us to move from an almost love, a love that we think is based on who we are and what we do, and to an altogether love, a love that grows to fill in all the spaces and bring light wherever there is darkness. You see, that is the love of Advent. That is the transformative love of God. And that is the love that came into the world to make certain that we would never, ever be separated from a God who loved us and a God who created us. A God who knows that we need hope. We need grace. But most of all, we need to know that we are loved. And when we move and live out of a space of love, life is different. Anger leaves. Brokenness becomes healed. And grace is sufficient for every need. So my brothers and sisters, don't try and control Christmas. Don't try and anticipate everything that should be. Allow yourselves to live into the season of Advent and be people who bring hope and bring light into dark places. Be people who share love and who know that even if it's difficult in this moment, that we, you, I, are not alone, but we are God's beloved. Would you pray with me? Precious God on this day, we love you more than we can say. Sometimes, Lord, we get it wrong trying to be what it is, what we think things should be. Lord, help us to lean into you, knowing that it's not about what we think, but it's about how you would have us live, to be beacons of hope and light in this world. To be people of promise in a world that's often so disappointed. Help us to be the light of the world as we allow you to shine through us to make a difference here in Athens and beyond. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.